Hi and welcome back to the Polymer Clay channel. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Uh, this is a beginner's video. I'm going to show you how to do lettering and I'm also going to make a little plant. Um, I'm hopefully going to post it here if I can find that video. Um, it's an old uh, picture so it's a bit grainy um, but it's basically what I'm going to make today and I'm going to show you how to do that. The lettering I'm going to show you how to do as well. I'm going to use some um, bigger strands of FIMO and smaller and show you how that you can personalise things really easily. So as I said this is a beginner's video and I'm going to show you um, how to do things right from the start. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so here's everything I'm going to use today. I'll just start with the clay. Fimo Professional, and this is white. Fimo Effects, and this is granite, 803. And then I've got gold effects, and that is 11. And then black um, in soft. Um, so this is going to be for the personalization. This is going to be for the background and this is going to be for the plant. So this is called Leaf Green and it's number 57. This is a pink, it is called Ruby Quartz and it's 286 and this is Final Effect. These two I have got out of a packet. This is um, Ruby Red I believe. This is Terracotta and this is Chocolate. So they're the names of those ones. So this is what I'll be using for the plant. Moving on, I am going to try some stamps today. They may not be in the final product. I like to get everything out and have a good idea at the start of what I'm going to um, do. And I like to get everything out as to what my ideas are. It could be this or that, because I like to use some sort of texture when I make bases, then the mica powder looks really cool. So the base is going to be circular. I'm going to make a circular base with a plant on and then I'm going to decorate it. So I've got a little heart here and then some leaf shapes. I do make my own leaf shapes normally but for ease I'm going to use this. Really simple. You just roll it flat, press it in. Really simple. These are the tools I'm going to use. These are called dotting tools and they're by Sculpey Studio. Absolutely fabulous things. I would never do any clay work without them to be honest. Um, if you're just starting out, I wouldn't uh, go into purchasing loads of things to start off with. I would literally use what you've got in the home. So for example, a pointing tool or a needle tool, you could literally use a needle if you wanted to. Anything like this, you could find um, around the house. So don't go purchasing loads of things if you don't, if you're not sure if you're going to carry on or not. Craft knife and tissue blade. I do recommend a tissue blade. These are something that you can't sort of substitute with anything else really. They're extremely thin, extremely sharp, so you do have to be careful. But when I make flat things, it, you'll see in some of my other videos, you can scoop it and it comes off amazingly. And it doesn't matter how much you've put it on the flat tile, it comes off great with this. As I mentioned before, these are the stamps I'm going to be using. And I've got some glitters out, but I haven't got the mica powder out yet. Um, I'll probably use some coordinating colours for the mica powder. So for example, I'll have some uh, green colours. I like to make the mica powder match. Um, and it is the idea is it brings up um, the colour that I already have. So for example, I'll be using a little bit of pink and red, um, which is why I've got these here. This is a medium sized glitter, so it's not fine dust. Um, and it's literally just bright red. This is a dust, really, really lovely. And it's called Red Rose. So it's a fine dust, this one, but it sparkles quite nicely. And then I've got the pink here. I have got red and pink, and yes, they do clash, but I tell you what, they look really good when you've got them on a plant. <laughs> so this is the pink glitter, and again, it's sort of medium size, it's not fine, but it's got like a holographic effect, so it's quite nice. Let's get started. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I've just got the clay and I'm cutting it up. Um, I'm using my tissue blade because it is the sharpest thing that you can use and it is just generally a lot quicker. Now with polymer clay um, it can be sometimes really unforgiving, I've got to be honest. Um, because this is a beginner video I'd like to show all of the steps um, just so it helps you out really. So I cut it up like this. This is one of the hardest ones that I've got. One, it's classic, and two, it's fairly old as well. So I've had this block quite some time. Now what I'm going to use is a little bit of baby oil. I've got quite a lot of it. So I'm gonna sprinkle it on and then literally roll it all up. And this gives the baby oil a chance to 
get into everything. Now the baby oil will enable the clay to stick together first and foremost. So once you've got it all in these tiny little bits, it will stick it together and then you can begin the rolling process. First of all, I start with pressing together like this. Just literally getting as much together as you can. And as you can see, it's already starting to stick really well. It can be a bit of a messy process, um, but if you love polymer clay, I'm sure you don't mind that. I certainly don't. Okay, so I've pressed it all together, and now I begin the hand pressing and squashing together. And this is what I find is the best way. As you can see, it's come off all on my hands. Um, the oil does make it very porous, so it is going to go all over your hands and also particularly in rings as well. Unfortunately, I can't get, I can't get this one off, so I don't tend to take them off. Um, but I would recommend if you've got something with diamonds in or something precious, please take it off because it will get stuck in there. And it is quite difficult to, to get it out afterwards. So as you can see, I've got it into a nice ball now. So I'm just going to roll it. Once you get to this stage, it's working. So give yourself a pat on the back. Okay, so now it's a really sticky ball of clay. It is still quite lumpy because I can feel it. So it's not mixed yet. Um, as you can see, it really is quite sticky. So what I'm going to do now is my other trick, cut it in half and quarter and then do what I call turning it inside out. And re-roll. Okay, so once you get it to a stage where um, you can feel that the lumps are, are going, I like to twist it and I like to roll it into a long shape just to see where it's going to split. And it is still splitting. So again, roll it up like this, twist, and go again and then get it back into a ball and keep going so the stickiness is starting to go now which is really good if you find that the clay is still very very sticky you can roll it in paper now you just get a normal printer paper or notebook paper pop it into the middle wrap it and then roll it from the outside and that will take out the oils from the polymer clay um, and it becomes excellent to use after that as mine doesn't need it i won't be doing that but that's one of the greatest tips that i can give you in terms of conditioning clay when conditioning clay there is no real quick answer you just got to have a bit of patience and obviously pick the right clay for you um, i see on some of the chats that i follow a lot of people say oh i'm not sure what to use if you're new i would try out everything so get some soft some classic um, all different types, all different styles. Um, you could try Sculpey, Cernit. I prefer Fimo, to be honest, so I'm going to be a bit biased. Um, I haven't really tried many of the other clays because I do stick to my one brand that I do like. And as you can see, it's working well for me. So this is quite soft now. There aren't any lumps. And I'm just pressing it out just to see if there are anything in there that isn't quite conditioned yet and it seems to be working quite well so there you go that didn't take too long at all I probably did that for about a few minutes so really good so this is going to become the pot okay so I think this is looking great I don't actually need to use any paper but what I am going to do is show you anyway um, so get it into this sort of uh, shape get a piece of paper and just squash it in there Right, so this is not so sticky at all now, so that's really good. Now the paper is also a good way of making sure that lots of fingerprints aren't in your clay as well. If the clay is really soft, another way that you can... So using paper is a really good way of getting some of the plasticizers out of the polymer clay. I wouldn't do it too much, just in case it dries out the clay too much and then you won't be able to work with it again. Um, but it is a fine balance between using enough oil and using enough paper. So this is in a good way now, I think. So it's nice and soft and I'm going to start making the shape for the clay pot now. Okay, so I got to this shape by holding my hand on a slant 
and pressing more on this side than that side and it gives it that type of shape. I'm just going to trim off the bottom and the reason why I'm going to do that is I need this piece to do the rim at the top. So I'm just going to reshape. Okay, so this is going to be the rim. So I'm just going to cut a bit there and a bit off here. Okay, so I've got the rim ready. I'm just going to make the dirt and I'll show you how I do that. Soften the clay. This is quite soft already, so that's good. And then I'm going to chop it up. Now for this part you want as much texture as possible so I'm just placing it on but not actually putting too much pressure on it. Okay so that's the dirt done now I'm just going to pop the rim of the pot on. And it's as simple as wrapping it round and then using the tissue blade to join it up. Don't worry about the join there because you can always make something to cover that up. A little flower or leaf or something like that. So it really doesn't matter that there's a little join there. You can sit there for a little while and smooth it all out. I tend not to bother. <laughs> um, I prefer to cover it up so that's what I'm going to do. Okay so the pot is ready. I'm not going to touch it too much at the moment because it is quite soft still and um, so that can rest for a little while this is the green classic that i've got here as you can see it's actually really quite soft i did add a little bit of oil um, but it proves that classic clay i mean this is actually quite old as well i'm not entirely sure how old but i think it's at least a couple of years old so so it can prove how a little bit of oil can completely revive a piece of clay so this has worked out really well so now I'm going to use these two colors for the flowers and this for the leaves and I'm going to start making the flower pot now okay so this is a cocktail stick I'm just going to pop it in here just like that leave it in place and that's what we're going to build the plant on Okay, so I just wanted to show that you can use pretty much anything to roll clay flat. This is my craft knife, so I'm going to use the handle part and just roll it out. This works really well if you're making something delicate and you don't want to get a great big roller out. And just use it as you would do normally. Keep turning so it doesn't stick. And it rolls flat really great. Alternatively, you could obviously use a pasta machine. Um, but mine's tucked in the back of my shelf at the moment, so I'm going to persevere with my craft knife. Okay, and I'm not going to need all of this, um, but I'm just going to get that nice and flat, and then I'll be using my cutter for the leaves. Okay, so I've cut them out. It's good to do it this way. Uh, for time really more than anything it just gives you sort of the, the basis of the shape and then you can make it more pointy or you can make it more rounded and it just depends on, on what you're looking for obviously they're a lot thicker as well so if you wanted them thinner just press them down and they obviously will get a bit bigger if you do that um, and then they will go on how you want them to each leaf I like to decorate individually I did have a look at some stamps that I was going to use but to be honest I'm just going to make the leaf um, designs with uh, my needle tool and now I'm going to make the flowers as well and then I'll do all the decoration and the detailing at once
So what I'm doing here is gently rolling between my fingers and stretching very slightly. And what this does is get um, a quite an even uh, width to the clay when it's quite thin. There we are. And it looks quite good once it's been smoothed out like that. And I just, anything a little bit bigger, just to give it a little twist between your fingers really gently. And it actually is not bad all the way along. So with this, I'm now going to get the plant and start making flowers. Start by pressing it in the bottom here so it's got it's stuck in nice and well and then twist around. Okay so just give you an idea of what it looks like now. Um, there is a bit here the join of the trimming of the pot and I'm just going to cover that up by making a little design here like a a vine or something and make it into a little swirl and then pop it right over and you can't see it at all now okay so I've made all this so this gives the basis of what we can put the plants on um, the FIMO won't naturally stick to the cocktail stick unless um, the clay is quite sticky if there's too much weight that goes on here it will all slide down so it will take a little bit of balancing, but this is uh, where we're going to add the flowers now. Right, so I thought I'd change the um, direction here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, it does make it a bit more difficult to film, so bear with me if I do nudge this camera. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to separate these little balls out start rolling these into softer balls because at the moment they're a bit square so to make the flower roll it into a nice ball press and then roll it from one end to the other to get a flower shape and that's what you have there so that's what we've got here stuck on the end of my finger and then I'm just gonna pop that on and these will go literally anywhere so it really does depend on what where you want the flowers to go there is no specific way I'm gonna pop one right on the top which will in, um, keep the um, vine in place as well so again little circle press on both sides and then roll it from one side to the other and away it goes sometimes I don't even use a knife you can just use your fingers okay so I'm going to make a few more and then I'm going to start on the pink ones and do a mixture And you do this in the same way, press and then roll them up and pinch off the end. Pop them on. It's as simple as that. If you do want to create them with more of a curl, you roll it into a little shape like this, press into a longer shape like this and then roll from the beginning to the end and then you'll get more of a, more of a rose sort of bud look like that. Right, so this one has got a bit of a swell to it. I've touched some red and gone back to the pink um, so that you can see that um, some of the pigment has come off. And to be honest, that really does add to the look to it because both colours are there. So I'm just going to roll that up. Create a shape like this. Pinch off the end. And that can be popped on. As this one's bigger, I'm just going to pop that here.
Okay, so I'll just give you a bit of a close up. Although you can never have too many flowers, I think that's about enough on this one. Um, have to be quite careful not to overload it because it is only being held up by that um, green piece on here. And what I'm going to do now is add uh, some leaves and perhaps a little bit more dirt around here. Okay, so I've got the leaf shape there. I'm just going to pop some lines in it. First one through the middle, fairly deep, and then some on the outside, any way you like, really. Pop it up. And squeeze it in a sort of direction so you've got a bit of shape to it and it doesn't look quite as flat. And then pop it in. I like to use a dotting tool for this because it means you can really get it in there and pop it in place and then give it some shape and then move on to the next one. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a trick for you here. Um, this is liquid Vimo and it acts like a little bit of um, glue. So I'm just going to pop that on here and then lift everything up slightly and then pop it back down. And what this will do um, before popping in the oven is it will keep everything in the place where you want it to be. Um, acts a bit like, as I said, it acts a bit like glue. Um, so it's liquid FIMO and you can pop it on like this and it will harden clear and you won't see it and it just keeps everything nice and strong. So I'm just going to pop a bit down here in that area. I'm also going to put some liquid clay here. So I'm just going to make a leaf for this area here. Okay, so a bit of a close-up here. Um, I've just popped some more leaves on. Um, you'll notice I've got three cocktail sticks here. These aren't destined to stay. Um, these are going to be moved out, but it's just to keep the structure um, in place and all the flowers in place as well. So if I just turn it round, you'll be able to see fully round the whole plant now. And it's looking really good. But it wasn't staying up because I put too much flowers on. Um, but that does happen. So I put a little bit more. Um, I put some more leaves here. And then basically filled out the structure at the bottom. Which meant hopefully the top will um, stay up. I'm just going to create some more dirt. So I can put that in here to make it a bit more realistic. And then I'm going to move on to the personalisation. Okay, so it's the following day now, and this has settled overnight, which means I'm not really going to be able to move any of these flowers now. 
so they're basically well stuck to each other <laughs> so I'm going to add some little bit more greenery at the top here and then another little rose and then I'll be adding the mica powder and the glitter Okay, so I've just got it closed up at the moment um, so I've just popped that uh, rose on the top there added a bit more vines and a bit more detail and also supported the bottom flowers here with a little bit more brown clay um, that acts as the dirt and that supports the, um, the leaves as well underneath so if you find some of the leaves are drooping at the bottom pop some more dark clay in there and it'll look more like dirt and it will be really good so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to add some mica powder, tiny little bit of glitter and then I'm going to get on with the base part that the plant is going to sit on and then also the lettering. Okay, so now I've got the um, base nice and flat, I'm just going to add texture and that'll be this texture sheet here. I'm just going to pop it on top and then apply even pressure. Okay, just for a bit of a close-up I'll show you what that looks like I think it's actually turned out really well and the detail has come across all the way along which is really good so now I'm going to add the plant and then I'm going to start on the lettering
Okay, so I've got some white here and I've just rolled it into a, a log. And with anything that you can roll, so again, I'm going to use my craft knife, is just roll to flatten. And that is just simply doing it like this. This is soft clay, so it will flatten quite quickly. Um, but you can't go too heavy with it because it doesn't last. The uh, clay can soften a bit too much sometimes, and then you won't be able to do much with it. So I do as much as I can, and then if it has to rest, it has to rest. Okay, so turn it over and do it again. Always roll on both sides. Okay, you may not be able to see this very well, but I've actually got a strip of white clay here. Um, this is going to be used for the background for the lettering, but I wanted to do this first because obviously it's white and I'm now about to go on to black. So always do this bit first and then set it aside and that will give it a chance to rest and not be too soft when you go to work with it. I have made it quite long um, so that we can curl the edges or, or turn them round, um, or in fact, um, cut some of it off so I make it nice and long so you've got so I've got plenty of room to write what I like um, and then and then that way if you want to add any further decorations you can do because you've got the the length there that you need so I'm going to start on the lettering now okay so I've got this zoomed in a bit so you can see just how the detailing works so for the personalization I'm going to spell the word mum so press it down and so that's straight now cut a diagonal here downwards cut straight up flip this round so it makes a nice point and then up again And cut straight down again. Flip it round and straight down again. Now to tidy up you can just use the, the dotting tool or something like that just to make it a little bit more rounded and not quite so angled and there's the first M now the best way to get the lettering from the tile is to scoop it up with a tissue blade and pop it on it will need reworking just so you can get it in the right place that you want and again it can be fiddly um, but I do prefer it this way than creating lettering from stamps and things like that it's more personalized I think just gonna trim that up so it's the same level again create an angle and then pop it on like that press together nice and gently make sure it's got some sort of stickiness there and with the rest of this held on to just bring that round and up trim the excess if you find that it's gone the wrong shape just cut a little bit more off and then again pick it up with the tissue blade and gently pop it on Okay, now for the other end.
Okay, so there's mum, ready to go. Um, what I'm going to do now is a little trick. So I've made this really long because I want to add some detail. So what I'm going to do to the edge here is just gently curl it up. And what this does is give it a little scroll effect. Now don't be too sort of tight with it. Make it nice and loose and give it some edge. And then on the edge on this and then on this side again roll it up nicely and make it like that and with that pick it up with your tissue blade I do put a lot of trust in these tissue blades I have to admit and then pop it on to the plant pot now with this create sort of movement so I'll show you in a moment from the, the front view but what I'm looking for on mine is something that looks a bit like a scroll so it's like a banner um, and press it in once you've got it into a, a style that you quite like um, I like a lot of movement in mine so I want to make it look like it's uh, it's basically ribbon that's how I want it to look so it needs to come around a little bit okay so i'm going to lift it up slightly so that's what it looks like now it is going to move so i'm just going to pop it down a little bit give it a bit of a push so it goes into the base so i'm just going to give you a bird's eye view and then bring it round hopefully keeping it in focus and there we have it so I'm just going to turn up the brightness a little bit so you can see clearly and there we have it so it's got a really nice sort of scroll effect lots of movement and yeah, it looks quite nice rather than just stuck in in one kind of shape really okay so now um, pop some mica powders and glitter on to give it the final jazz up okay so back to a different angle so what I'm going to do now, I've got the sign on and it's looking really good like this. I'm going to clean up. Now I don't know if you know, uh, most polymer clay artists will tell you that working with white is absolutely horrendous and I couldn't agree more. But I do have a little trick for working with white. This is boiling hot water and this is a cotton bud. Literally, just pop it in there and rub really gently over any marks, any bits of fluff and it will bring it off really nicely. So I'm just doing that just to bring up the colouring and also lift off any bits of black clay where it's smudged or any fluff basically. I'm quite lucky to say that there's not a great deal on here so I'm just going to not do too much. Sometimes um, polymer clay can get a bit fluffy or bubbly um, if you do it too much in the same place or don't use hot water um, and again there's a little bit here Ponderal clay doesn't mind water both wet and dry so if you had it baked if you get something wet it's really not a problem um, if you use water on unbaked polymer clay it will just simply dry so now I'm just going to go through the mica powders and things that I'm going to use now so I do have some Arteza mica powders today. Um, I'll go through them quickly. This one is copper. This one is raspberry red. Really pretty this one. It's got like a metallic look to it. This one is called moss green. And this one is pearl white, number zero. Um, I've also got some others. So I've got unbranded ones here. I've had these a long time, so I'm sorry, I don't know where these have come from. This one's a, a bright red. This one's a very fine glitter in red. So it's going to be quite eye-catching on the red parts of the roses. Okay, I'm going to start with the moss green. I have a little trick with mica powders. I'm probably going to say this in every video because I wouldn't want to drop the whole thing. Pop some in the lid of the mica powder and just use the lid. 
um, the number of times I've caught this by mistake and it's gone absolutely everywhere and as I'm sure a lot of you will know mica powder isn't easy to clear up um, not only that it's uh, it would be a waste so pop it in the lid and then if you do knock this it's not too much of a problem okay so I'm going to use the green on the leaves I absolutely love mica powder, it does wonders with polymer clay, um, it brightens up all the little bits that you want brightened, um, it adds shimmer, it adds depth, um, it's just absolutely wonderful and it kind of brings everything alive as well. Um, if you don't have mica powder you can just use cheap eyeshadow, I've also got quite a lot of cheap eyeshadow as well. What I use really does depend on what I'm making um, and to be honest if I'm making things like little faces, little dolls, that sort of thing I will use eyeshadow because it just looks so much more realistic um, so as you can see it's looking absolutely fantastic with just that tiny little bit of mica powder on it and all I'm doing is just gently dabbing and it's really highlighting all of the areas I wanted to and given it that fabulous sparkle okay moving on to the pink now okay I've got some of the copper in this pot here now so I'm just going to sprinkle that over here just to give that a little bit of highlight okay I'm just going to add some white around here to highlight this has got a pearlescent effect so it's really quite nice now for the final piece now for some glitter Okay, I'll just give you a bit of a close-up view. There we go. And uh, there's a full view around there. And it's really sparkly now, so it's brought up the colours really nicely. And particularly around the back as well. It's done a stunning job there, that mica powder and glitter. Okay, so one final look. This is ready for the oven. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I had a lot of fun making it and I'm just going to show you what it looks like now. So here it is. The rose plant all the way around. And it's got quite a lot of detail and decoration um, on the back as much as the front. Obviously it being a 3D decoration that is really important. Um, with a little mum sign on the front. So there we go. And that is how you create a plant pot from polymer clay. I just want to say thank you very much for all my new subscribers. I really, really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, I do look at my comments, so please leave me a comment. Um, give me some ideas on what you'd like to see next. Um, I had fun with this tutorial. I haven't made a little flower for ages, so it's been really fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. That is how you can create a palm a pad there, a palm plot, a pad brilliant. What is it? <laughs> that is oh dear god. Breathe. And that is how you can create a plant pot from polymer clay. Wow, that's too many peas. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Yes, fuff that. What were language was that? My British is my first language. Thanks so much. Oh my god. <laughs> Piss off. Thanks so much. Why thank you so much.